All right, thanks everyone for joining. I will get us started. Uh, I'll start a video here. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Connecton, I'm Beeswax CMO. And uh, I hope everyone who's here has been enjoying our 15 minutes with Beeswax series uh, while we're all cooped up. Hope everybody's safe, everybody's healthy. Uh, we thought this was a way that we could start to share some of the knowledge that we have about all things ad tech, about all things beeswax, sometimes things not so ad tech. Uh, last week we had uh, how, to, how to make a killer cocktail in 15 minutes. The videos for all these should be on our YouTube page or go to our blog, uh, blog.beeswax.com. You can, you can access the videos from these, the presentations, and just watch them all night long. You can binge them if you want to. Um, so today uh, where we have a a really interesting one. Uh, it's called MetaMarkets Overview. And for today's session, uh, we've invited our, our own Beeswax product manager, Tyler Dalemans, uh, who's an expert in all things MetaMarkets and Beeswax. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to him. Please do uh, submit your, your questions with the Q&A button on the bottom. Uh, we prioritize those folks who'd like to ask their question on camera. So if you do, do use the raise hand function, and then you'll be able to appear and ask your question, have a dialogue. Uh, but other than if you don't feel like that, you can just uh, use the Q&A feature. And stick around, we'll be teasing our next session, which is happening next week. So without any further ado, uh, I will actually turn it over to Tyler Dillmans. Uh, tell us about MetaMarkets. I'm eager to learn. Thanks, Paul. Uh, yeah, so I'm Tyler, uh, product manager here. I focus on reporting and data aspects of our platform. And what that means is one of the things that falls under my purview is our integration with, uh, with a product called MetaMarkets. And so that's what, what I'm here to talk about. Uh, brief agenda. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit about what exactly MetaMarkets is, um, how it more broadly slots into our reporting suite. Uh, I'll give people a brief walkthrough of some of the features that might be useful to them. Uh, and then as Paul said, we'll close with some Q&A. So yeah, well, let's start with like, what is MetaMarkets? So, uh, MetaMarkets is a data platform and uh, it has some light visualization capabilities, but it's a data platform um, with particular emphasis on low latency queries, which means that you want to pull your data, uh, it comes back really, really fast, uh, is, the, is the main sort of uh, reason why MetaMarkets is a, is a great product. Um, and MetaMarkets has seen particular success in the ad tech ecosystem. So um, obviously we're a user of it, but there's definitely other ad tech companies that use it as well for both internal and external reporting. Um, and like I said, some of the key key benefits, one of them is, uh, like I said, the, the, the fast queries is great. Um, some of those queries can even come back in like less than a second. Um, there's a point and click UI, so you don't have to know SQL. Um, you don't have to pick a bunch of fields from a dropdown. You just kind of click what you want to see and it kind of adjusts in real time. Um, in contrast to our query tool, where there's like eight different report types, uh, MetaMarkets uh, allows you to see a bunch of different dimensions in a single dashboard. Uh, and then one of the, the great features, which I'll talk about towards the end, is that you can kind of easily see sort of trending comparisons over time. So day over day, week on week, percent change over time, that sort of thing. So um, I'll spend just a second on this slide just to give people a brief overview of what it looks like, and then I'll come back. Uh, but this is what MetaMarkets looks like. Um, it's a little, on the left side, you got your, your, uh, your line graph, and then you've got a bunch of dimensions on the right side. Um, and I'll talk about this in a second, but yeah, let's, let's talk about the integration, which is... Uh, we embed that view into each customer's Buzz UI. Um, so uh, our existing customers will know you just go to the tools section, top right corner of uh, the UI, and then there should be a MetaMarkets dropdown. The way MetaMarkets gets data from us is uh, we send the data to MetaMarkets in roughly real time. So essentially, as soon as we get the data in our system, so the auction bid win data, uh, we forward it to MetaMarkets, and then MetaMarkets will process that data, aggregate it, put it in a format that makes it really efficient for that fast query time. And then it shows up approximately four hours later in their platform for querying. Uh, that's not like a strict SLA, but um, in practice, over a lot of experience with the product, that's typically what we see um, the return time for seeing data show up in MetaMarkets. And then MetaMarkets will hold on to that data for 30 days and allow customers to query it for that period before dropping the data entirely. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about the UI briefly. Um, so this is the main Explore page. Most people use this uh, more frequently than other aspects of the platform. But yeah, on the left side, like I said, you got your main KPIs uh, for the auctions view. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other views as well, but for the auctions view, that's your requests. That's the QPS coming to your bidder. Um, and you can kind of see there's a time series gra line graph as well. And then on the right side, uh, which is what is really making MetaMarkets powerful, is you can kind of click and select a bunch of different dimensions and filter and quickly see how fast those results return. So in this case, you know, I've pulled a few different dimensions, DLID, device type, and DMA. 
And uh, just clicking through, you can quickly see as I adjust those, the counts uh, adjust accordingly. Um, yeah. So what data is available in MetaMarkets? Um, so there's three available data feeds. Um, most customers uh, will be most familiar with uh, the auctions feed because we include auctions to all customers at no cost. Um, and the way the auctions feed works is we take a 1% sample of the QPS going to your bidder and then we forward it to MetaMarkets and then MetaMarkets will up -sub sample it back to 100%. Um, once there, um, what most customers use it for is the ability to just kind of slice and dice their QPS and see the available inventory that's coming to their bidder and determine, uh, you know, I want to traffic this campaign. Um, I want to target these particular criteria. Uh, do I have the scale to do that right now? Um, so that's like the, the major uh, use case of the auctions feed. Then we have two offerings which we call advanced meta markets, and that's the bids and wins report and also reach. And so bids and wins is what it sounds like. There's a bunch of bids and win data, but we also surface like media spend as well. Um, and um, some customers find this really useful for troubleshooting purposes. So they wanna go in, they wanna see um, what sort of inventory am I bidding on? Where am I losing more frequently than I'm winning? Um, people find it really useful for troubleshooting specific line items or seeing you know, week over week changes in like how their winning patterns are. Um, the offering for this, uh, it, it's, it's an upsell and it scales with QPS. So if you're interested in it, talk to your account manager, your sales rep, uh, whoever you're in talk, uh, talks with at the BSOX side. Um, and then we also, when you, when you upsell into the bids and wins, we, we throw in reach for free. And so reach is just a report that uh, it allows you to see the unique number of users you're, uh, you're reaching across uh, you know, the dimensions you're picking, uh, as well as the average number of impressions you're showing those users. Um, and reach has, you know, a lot more limited dimensions than some of the other reports. Uh, so the question might be like, how does this fit more broadly into the reporting suite, especially for anyone who's not a beeswax customer on the call? So um, MetaMarkets effectively makes up the third pillar of our reporting suite. So refresher for some people, but I'll talk through the, the pillars, so to speak. Um, so the main system we, we have is our query tool. And this is a system that, um, you know, you log into our platform, there's a UI. Uh, there's also a robust API if you wanna send that data to a server, but you can make ad hoc queries to our data warehouse. They come back usually within a couple seconds, but sometimes a little longer, um, and you get some aggregated reports back. Um, we treat this as the source of truth for everything in beeswax, and the data is typically available within one hour of, it, um, of the event occurring. Um, but an important caveat is the query tool only has bids, wins, and conversions data. Um, in contrast to that, we have logs. Logs are uh, row level insights. So if you want insight into things like, you know, IP addresses and specific user IDs, things that only really make sense on a single row level, um, logs are great for that. Another great benefit of logs is that not all of our logs, but many of our logs uh, are available in real time. So if you're looking to ingest the data into a data warehouse or build some sort of application that's, you know, making decisions in real time, um, you can subscribe to one of our real time logs feeds and get that data. Uh, it also includes a bunch of dimensions that are not available in query tool and metamarkets. And then the final pillar, which we're talking about is metamarkets. Um, and it's kind of unique insofar as it's the only way to get auctions and reach data in a UI format in our platform today. Um, like I said, most customers are using it for avails analysis and that's a really important um, thing for ad ops traders to be working with on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, in, in particular, it, it fits into a very, specific role, which is it's really good for answering quick questions and quick exploration of data. Uh, if you want to just kind of click around, explore the, the QPS that's coming to your bidder or uh, your bid performance and win performance across a bunch of line items, you can kind of click around and just see what that's like rather than, you know, pull one report from query tool and then wait for another report to pull. Um, MetaMarkets is really like ad adept at doing that sort of task. So yeah, now, now I'll talk a little bit about some of the features in MetaMarkets, um, in addition to that Explore page that may or may not be useful to you. Um, yeah, so the first is uh, something I've kind of hinted at previously, which is this trending comparison. So over in the corner, you have a compare to uh, checkbox. And so what you can do is you pick your base time period, but then you pick a comparison time period. So in this case, I've picked um, the previous week and then the week before that. and um, you can kind of see how uh, all these dimensions are sort of trending over time. So in this case, it looks like the QPS coming to this bidder 
almost everything across the board decreased. So we probably removed a bunch of targeting templates. Uh, but interestingly, you can see, I think it'll pop up in a second, uh, 320 by 50 inventory like increases by 300% in this time period. So um, really useful if you're trying to understand how a targeting template change changed the, the inventory available to you. Um, you can see here in this line graph, you'll see it on the next slide as well. Um, it also gives you like kind of time series data on term, in terms of how this compared to the previous period. Um, so yeah, I'll actually just transition into that. So another great page is the facet page. So you navigate that, uh, navigate to that. There's like a navigational element at the top of the page. And uh, this kind of gives you a more in-depth view of what's available on the Explorer page. So uh, all the filters you had applied on that Explorer page carry over to the facet view. But then you can come in here and kind of see it more in depth. So you get the more blown up line graph. So in this case, we can see, hey, it looks like this inventory, something happened uh, you know, middle of the day Monday and it kind of decreased in uh, prevalence. Uh, but it also will show you the top dimensions for your currently applied filters. Um, but what I actually find more useful about the facet view is this functionality called splits. Um, and so uh, you see in the top left corner, there's uh, this split by function, uh, this split by uh, option that you can kind of select from. And it allows you to apply some filters and then choose how you want to split the inventory and see your KPIs broken out. So in this case, if I want to layer on two things, in this case, it will be ad size and deal ID, I can see uh, first it'll break down all the inventory into ad size, and then it will break it down into deal IDs. And so within the ad sizes, I can see the breakdown of the deal IDs. So this is really useful when you want to do like a multi-dimensional analysis of if I layer all these things together, how much inventory uh, or, you know, whatever you're sort of analyzing. Um, and you can do this on the Explore page too, but it's a little bit more clicks to do on the Explore page. So this is really useful. It's kind of similar to a pivot table in that sort of respect. Next one is kind of obvious, um, but you know everybody loves to download results. Um, it's I don't find it the most intuitive thing in their UI, but it's this little inbox tray, uh, and you can download results. Um, you want to bring it to Excel or something like that. And um, in MetaMarkets, this is contextual based on whatever you have on the screen at this time. So you can see on the Explorer page here, I zeroed in on the device type, and so the download results change. Like, oh, do you want to download? you know, the time series data, do you want to just download the device type data, um, all the metrics, just the metrics on display. And uh, so it's contextual based on this page. You can also download from like the facet page, for example. So I encourage people to like explore this and see, you know, what data is available to export. Um, one important caveat about downloading in MetaMarkets is uh, there's a row limit. I believe it is 250 rows. So um, for certain use cases like bids and wins, you're probably better served exporting from something like our query tool or for auctions data, uh, potentially aggregating the auction logs yourself and you know, pulling it from your own system. Um, but if you just need like the top 250 rows, it's all aggregated. So that is there as an option if you need it. Then a few data visualizations. Um, so some people use these, uh, some people don't, um, but uh, there's a heat map view, which is kind of cool. I pulled a pretty basic one. So you can plot two different dimensions on an X and Y axis. So on the X, I put the auction type. On the Y, I put, is it, uh, is it app inventory or is it web inventory? And you can kind of see the hotspots. So in this case, you know, first price auction seemed particularly prevalent in a web inventory context. Uh, and there's almost no like fixed price web inventory coming from this bidder. Um, so really useful. Um, this is only like a three by two, but I think it goes up to like 25 by 25. Um, just another way to sort of view that sort of hotspot and like where the overlap is. And then no analytics platform would be complete without a bar chart. So uh, they have a bar chart in here. Uh, nothing super fancy here, but in terms of like, if you would rather see this rather than, you know, raw numbers being spit out, if this helps you visualize, you know, where the big volume of your uh, traffic or your wins or your bids are, um, this is totally an option for you as well. Um, yeah, and so I kind of sped through quite a bit, but that that's kind of like a quick overview. Of, um, if people have more questions, uh, we have some MetaMarket stocks at help.beeswax.com. Uh, feel free to reach out to your account manager, the support team if you're an existing customer. But otherwise, uh, my email's there if other people want to reach out to me. Um, and yeah, otherwise, I'll, I'll turn it over to Paul uh, for Q&A.
Thank you, Tyler. That was awesome. Uh, and we do have a couple questions, so do stick okay. around. So sure. uh, first question, uh, you might have already covered this, uh, but for, for long tail websites, is there a way to query if a given website that appears from the outside to be connected to SSPs has actually sold traffic recently? That's helpful for building a whitelist of oddball sites or oddball sites, sorry. Um, so I'd have to look into that. Um, it would be great if you feel free to email me and I can kind of dig into that. That might be something I might have to look into a little bit more deeply. Oh, okay. And we, we have the name of the person who submitted it. I just don't need to read it. Uh, great. I don't yeah, know if they, if we have the, the, uh, their go ahead to say their name. So I can just pass that along to you and you can follow up directly. Uh, sure, another question. Uh, the traders on my team are forever troubleshooting PMPs. How would they use MetaMarket's tool for this? So uh, it really depends on what type of troubleshooting you're looking for. Like you're trying to find out whether you're bidding or winning um, or what, like if, if you think like, oh, it doesn't seem like I'm winning any deals, you could definitely come in here, target the deal IDs that you're trying to bid against and then see, uh, you know, am I bidding actually? Like um, maybe you could come in and see like, oh, actually like I'm not, uh, you could target a specific deal ID. You could see, oh, it looks like all the deal IDs are, uh, there's actually no deal IDs uh, when you overlap with the inventory in my bidder, for example, right? So like you're targeting a specific PMP, but maybe you're not getting enough of the auctions to your bidder that you're trying to target, for example. So it kind of really depends on like what you're trying to troubleshoot. Um, but definitely like I would encourage like kind of um, target like whatever KPI you're kind of looking for, whether that's like I'm not bidding, I'm not winning. Um, and then like kind of break it down by dimensions and try and determine like, am I targeting the right things? Um, is, is my bid price high enough? So I think we log the bid price as well, that sort of thing, yeah. All right, all right, well, thank you very much. And I wanna turn it over actually to our next 15 minutes with Beeswax star, Katie Jones, uh, who, who is uh, joining us from London. And she's gonna be hosting uh, a session called 15 Minutes with Beeswax, Programmatic Pricing Penalizes Premium. Say that five times fast. Uh, and that's gonna be on April 21st at 12 p.m. Um, what is that? Uh, 5 p.m. London time, Katie? You're muted. Hold on, let's unmute you. Sorry, it's yes. my fault. Uh, 5 p.m. in London, uh, 6 p.m. Through, uh, through the rest of Europe. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what folks might want, might learn uh, on programmatic pricing penalizes premium. <laughs> well, apart from how to pronounce the tongue, the tongue twister title, um, it's really focusing on, on three main points. Um, firstly, sort of why you should care about the platform pricing model, like why does it matter? Um, secondly, sort of what types of advertisers are most impacted by, by lack of sort of fair pricing process and how also it impacts publishers because there's an impact on, on both elements. And then um, thirdly, finally, um, what are the sort of alternatives uh, to that established percentage of media pricing model? Um, and what you might be able to, to challenge your, your partners on, whether you are working on the buy side or on the sell side of, of this industry. All right, thank you. And thank you all, all of you for joining us. Uh, again, I hope you all stay safe and healthy and are practicing good social distancing. We will keep streaming you from all parts of the globe, uh, insights and, and things you can use about ad tech, about beeswax, about our partners and about just getting through this in general. So thank you everyone. And I sent you all a registration link for Katie's 15 minutes with beeswax next week. Have a great day.